Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Marie. Special welcome to you. Today I'm excited because we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing a whole get ready with me, so I'm showing you exactly how I achieve this hair, how I achieve this look, all while answering your questions. Everything that you guys have ever wanted to know about me. You guys submitted tons of questions and also some really interesting assumptions about me that I will be addressing as well. So it's gonna be a fun one, a really interesting one. Let's just get started. I first need to deal with this hair. I mean, I have had my hair twisted for two days. I honestly feel like, I don't know if maybe this has been too long to keep the twist in, but yeah, let's take it out and see what we're dealing with. Like a big chunk, a chunk of right here. You can see the roots are like really poofy. Like I'm really not sure how this is gonna come out. Anyway, let's just go ahead and take these out. You know what though? One thing I've been noticing for twist outs is that the bottoms can get really, really frizzy sometimes. My ends, they're just, they always get dry. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of oil on my hands. I know, I don't usually use oil. I say that all the time. I kind of stay away from oil, but I feel like my ends, literally just my ends kind of need it. So I'm gonna go ahead. This is the hair oil by Bread Beauty Supply. Love them so much. I've literally never used this before. So let's get it popping. Ooh, I feel like there's risk for this to be really messy. Okay. So that's it, literally. Ooh, now I'm dropping it all over the place. All right, so I'm just gonna rub that in between my hands. Ooh, this smells really nice. I was not expecting that. It smells really nice, like fruity almost, and not like the artificial kind of fruity. It smells like, like fruity, something fruity you'd smell in the kitchen. Mmm, very nice, very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna start by kind of applying a little bit of oil to these ends and then lightly separating the ends. It actually doesn't look too bad. I was low-key worried that this twist out was gonna be a hot mess express, but it does not look bad. Once it's all separated fully, I think it's gonna look pretty cute. Okay, all right, so let's get into these questions. So I can answer while I'm separating. So I've got all of the questions on my phone here. Okay, so one question, Timbolicious asked, how long have you been with George? I admire you guys so much. Thank you so much, that's really sweet. We've been together only, well, this June of 2020 was our like one year anniversary. I mean, we've been talking a little bit longer than that, but we've been like official one year as of June 2020, so. It's been great. I have known him since I was like 13. He, he I friend zoned him. That's why I'm laughing. I friend zoned him for the longest time. And all all these years he's been trying to get me and I don't know, something something just clicked. The stars just aligned this time around and it's just been the best thing ever. All right, let's see what else we got. The pretty jazzy asked, is your dad from Atlanta? No, none of my family is from Atlanta. In fact, all of my family, my entire family, including my older sibling, are all Jamaican. My mom and dad had my brother in Jamaica and then moved over to Cayman and then that's where I was born. So if you don't know, I am Caymanian and Jamaican. So yeah, Jamaican family, literally, I like, I don't, I don't have family that's from Atlanta. I don't have any, American family. A lot of my family lives in America, but we're not actually American, if that makes sense. I feel like that was such a random question. But yeah, your girl is Caribbean through and through, okay? Born, raised by blood, all of the above. I'm as Caribbean as it gets. <laughs> oh my gosh, this twist out particularly feels really soft. I'm liking it. I mean, I know it doesn't really look like anything right now, but it feels so good. Okay, Kathy Miname. Miname, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry if I'm butchering it. But she says, do you plan to keep your hair long? I've seen you post sometimes that you miss your TWA. That's a really good question. I literally have conversations with myself about this every single day. Like I literally, I really and truly do miss my TWA so much. It was so cute, such a vibe. I recently just celebrated three years since my Big Chop journey, which is kind of mind blowing just saying that. Three years, that is, that is wild. The time has completely flown and it's just been an amazing, incredible journey. Um, so now to answer your actual question, do I plan to keep my hair long? Oh my gosh, it's, 
Ugh. Like today I'll tell you yes and then tomorrow I'll tell you no, I'm about to chop it. You know what I mean? Like it's so up and down for me. I did however plan to really try and get to like waist length while curly. So like while shrunk, while curly, I want it to be a waist length but I realized how ridiculous that sounds and how crazy long my hair actually has to be in order to be there. So I don't know. I don't know if it's really gonna happen but for right now, I think I am still going to just continue to grow and really see how long I can get it to grow. And then, you know, if there's a point in between there though that I feel like, all right, you know what? My spirit's being led to cutting it again, then I'm gonna cut it again. So yeah, this is a very long answer to your question. For now, I'm gonna grow. Eventually, the chop is coming back. That's it. So yeah, you can see <laughs> this one definitely had some really poofy roots. I didn't twist this one tight enough, but Good thing it's in the back. Look at how shrunk it is though. My hair is literally like down here when it's wet. <laughs> it's really shrunk right now. All right, let's see what other questions we got here. Susie Marielle is asking, do you wear it up in a pineapple when you are at home? So I'm assuming that's obviously talking about my hair. I do wear my hair a lot in a pineapple, especially when I'm at home. I like to have it kind of out of my face, but I love me a good like loose pineapple because I know that that's not really gonna disrupt my curl pattern too much. So I can pineapple it as much as I want and then shake out the pineapple, fluff my hair and be good to go and look cute whenever I'm ready. You know what I mean? So yes, loose pineapple is definitely, <laughs> definitely my go-to style when I'm at home and just want my hair like kind of out of my face. All right, so yeah, what I was afraid of was the front not looking right and yeah, it does not look right, but you know what the thing is when you do a twist out, you just got to continue fluffing, separating, picking it out, and then eventually like the magic happens. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, let's check out some more questions. Do you take any hair vitamins? Okay, so this is a really interesting question. So I will say for the first two full years of my natural hair journey, I did not take any hair vitamins. I was scared. Back when my hair was relaxed, I used Hairfinity once and that completely broke my skin out. It took me a long, long time to get my skin to bounce back after that. So ever since then, I had been like kind of scarred and like really nervous to take any hair growth supplements. But then I heard about the liquid supplement by Curls and that one they say does not break you out because it is a liquid so your body like really absorbs a lot more of the vitamins. So yeah, I ended up trying that out and I loved it. I didn't break out. I was super, super surprised and really excited about that. When was that? January 2020, I tried them out. I got two bottles and the bottles will last you roughly like a month. So I did that January, February. And then I haven't really been like actually keeping up with it. I did for a little bit in the summer. Like I stopped in February and then I wanted to start again in summer to see how long my hair could grow. And I did probably about like another two to three months. And then ever since my last bottle has run out, I'm just like, all right, I can't keep buying this and like using it like drugs, you know what I mean? Yeah, all that to say, I've never taken hair vitamins religiously for like a whole year or something like that. Um, but yes, this year, 2020 has been the first year where I actually started testing that out a little bit. I definitely do think I did notice some additional growth. I feel like with my genetics, my hair grows pretty fast on its own anyway, but I feel like the vitamins not only like helped it grow a little bit more, but it also helps it to grow really nice and healthy. All right, so next, Curls Academy is asking, what's your skincare routine? And I love your hair. So it's funny that she mentioned both my hair and skin because I actually did just drop a video on YouTube a couple videos ago. I did my current winter hair and skin routine, so all of the above, all of the deets that you need to know is in that video. So I'll also link that below for you guys to check out if you have not seen that yet, but all the answers to your question are in that video. All right, so I think this is kind of as fluffed out as we're gonna get it for today. So what I'm gonna do is kind of take a break from my curls. Just gonna put on this cute little bandana for right now. Perfect, so I'm just gonna let my hair breathe and now we can get into this face. All right, so I literally have no idea what kind of look I'm gonna do today, but 
we're just gonna decide as we move right along. So I'm just gonna prime really quick. This is the Bobbi Brown face base, so good. I love it, especially during the winter because it is just nice and juicy. It feels like a really nice moisturizing moisturizer. <laughs> Literally just feels so good on the skin. And then another product that I've really been obsessing over lately when you really want like a nice dewy kind of natural glowing from within glow. This Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter product is so good. And I literally just go ahead and swipe the product a little bit over the high points of my cheek and a little bit on my chin. My nose never needs extra glow, okay? It's got the glow there all on its own. But yeah, so it's pigmented a little bit, but it's very lightly pigmented and you can literally just do this to kinda shear the pigment away and it just literally leaves you with the most beautiful glow. So I like to do this like underneath my foundation and it's just, oh, it'll like glow through. It is so, so nice. Also, it's really nice for a natural dewy kind of look when you are going makeup free as well, but we're not doing makeup free today. I've already done my eyebrows, so let's go ahead against complexion. Another product that I'm obsessed with, which you guys have heard me talk about plenty on here and on Instagram, the Charlotte Tilbury Air Blush, Air Blush. The Charlotte Tilbury Air Brush Flawless Finish Foundation, so good, and I wear the shade Nine Cool. All right, let's see what else you guys got for me. Are you a full-time content creator? So I am very happy and proud to say that I am indeed a full-time content creator as of January 2020. That has been my full-time position and it's crazy i'm laughing because i went ahead and decided to risk it and then boom the world turned upside down so it has absolutely been the biggest struggle of my entire life but it has also been the most rewarding thing in my life the best decision besides my fake chop that i've ever made and i'm proud of myself you know i'm really really happy and just continuing to work on creating the life that i have really always dreamed of my mom is also an entrepreneur so she runs a boutique full-time and she's just amazing i look up to her and she's really the main reason why i ended up taking a chance on myself in general because as a 25 going on 26 i mean i'm 26 now but at the time when i made the decision i was 25 and like that's such a crazy Thing to do you know not only just to go and like do something full-time for yourself but I moved countries and everything <laughs> yeah so it's been hard it's been difficult there's been lots of tears but there's also been tears of joy it's been completely rewarding it challenges me every single day as a woman to just be better grow up like you know it's just been absolutely amazing so yes I am a full-time content creator. Oh my gosh, I feel like I feel like I talk a lot, but that's kind of the whole point of this video, right? Whoo, you see that dew like just shining through? Mmm, so good, so so good. This and the NARS foundations, my top two favorite foundations ever of life. Like it just it gets me all the way together, no matter what. All right, just moving on to concealer. This is the Insta Bake Concealer by Beauty Bakery. Black owned and literally my current favorite concealer. How did you get to where you are now? So I guess that's another cute question to kind of piggyback off of my last question. So being a full-time content creator definitely did not happen overnight. It's also not something that I ever aspired to for like years and years, you know what I mean? It kind of just all happened. I will say when I was big chopping, I was blogging back then. So that was December, 2017. I was previously working full time in a law firm in the Cayman Islands. And so I was working in marketing actually for the law firm and it was, I had an amazing team. It was great, but it just wasn't really fulfilling me as a person. Like I said, my team is amazing. Still friends with all of them today. Like really, it was like a dream come true kind of job. It was amazing, but for me and like my entrepreneurial spirit, I guess it just wasn't really enough to kind of like fulfill me for exactly what I really wanted to achieve in life, if that makes sense. As a passionate person, I had so much more to put my passion into and like to just do and to give to this world, you know what I mean? So I then really, really started to push myself and I really focused a lot of like all my time, all my resources, all my little extra money. I put that into my passion, 
which was my blogging and my influencing online on Instagram and then obviously here on YouTube as well. So yeah, all my free time I spent editing my content, planning my content, creating content, taking photos and doing all that stuff literally any moment where I could squeeze a little bit of extra time. So I would say like I definitely worked overtime on this thing because it was not easy doing it. It was definitely not easy doing it while I had a full-time job, but I was literally that passionate about it that I was like, it's fine, like I, I love this, you know? So yeah, by putting in the time, putting in the work, and also by just injecting like my passion behind everything, I think that's really what's helped me to kind of build my platforms to where they are right now. They're definitely not where I really want them to be, but looking back, have I accomplished a lot and built something amazing? Yes. Um, I will also say in terms of making that jump from full-time working for somebody else to then full-time working for myself, there was a lot of planning that went into that. Um, I had to save a lot of money, a lot. That was my plan because I knew initially it wasn't necessarily going to financially hold me up as much as I needed. So what I did was I sat down and I saved my money and I saved enough for like a few months that I could just live off of if you know things started off really slow and I was really thankful I did that because then the pandemic hit while I was over here and yeah it was you know obviously everything changed so yeah I would definitely say preparation 100% is key and just literally to follow your passion put in the work and just literally keep going don't let anybody discourage you from you know how silly they might think your dream is or how far-fetched don't let anybody ever discourage you I've had my own family members sometimes say like you know little slick remarks here and there just making it seem like my dream of like being an influencer and like working for myself one day is like really stupid and it doesn't make sense and like people will literally come for your dream and tell you that you know you can't achieve it or it doesn't make sense you know, but don't let that ever discourage you because honestly, if I'd let that discourage me, I wouldn't be here right now. So really that would be one of my biggest pieces of advice is to just go after it full force, 100%, do what you gotta do and keep going. That's basically what I did to get to right here. Oh, and by the way, the setting powder that I used was the one size translucent powder. Y'all know I've been obsessed with the Laura Mercier honey, but this one is kind of, freaking amazing do you see this so good I'm actually gonna go in with their darker shade now to start like kind of not really sculpting my face but adding back a little bit of warmth all right so let's see what else we got here when did you move from the Caribbean what was it like making friends <laughs> making friends so as I've mentioned previously I just moved from the Cayman Islands to Atlanta in January 2020 so that gave me zero amount of time to be able to put myself out there and really make friends it's been difficult to say the absolute least because I do not want to catch the virus so I have been home I've been isolating and I'm not gonna lie like the inner me is like low-key happy about not having to put myself out there too much because I was like a little bit nervous about that I am kind of shy sometimes and a little bit of a homebody so i was kind of like okay now i have the best excuse ever to stay home so yeah making friends not really existent i will say virtually i kind of have made a couple blogger friends online for sure you know other curly girls who are doing the same thing it's just kind of natural for us to connect eventually we all support each other's content which i think is like absolutely dope um, so I have met a couple people who are not even necessarily just in Atlanta, but you know across the globe just virtually like that, which is really cool. Um, and I did sign on with a management agency this year, so I have become friends with a couple of the girls that my management team also manages. So there has been that. There is a group of bloggers as well in Atlanta. We have like a little group chat on Instagram, so we've kind of met virtually. But again, I haven't had the chance to really actually build any like strong friendships yet. I'm really hoping that will change in 2021, of course. Like, like I said, I am a little bit shy, but I do definitely want to put myself out there because at the end of the day, I love people. I love having just amazing friendships. I just I have a lot of love to give or I have like I just love to love people. 
and I don't know that might sound weird but that is just kind of me in a nutshell so, so yeah I'm excited to hopefully have more opportunities but the move has been really good so far though challenging of course like I never would change anything about it I don't regret it at all even with all the struggles that came along with it and still come along with it um, I love it absolutely absolutely love it best decision I've ever made Besides my big chop, of course. <laughs> so I think I've literally just decided right now in this moment that I kind of want to go for a little holiday-esque vibe. Christmas is literally next week. How? I have no idea, but it is. And so I kind of want to get a little bit more in the vibe of it. So let's do something fun on the eyes. I received these Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palettes by Charlotte Tilbury. They're absolutely gorgeous. It comes with four shades and they are just like the cutest, most like shimmery shades ever. I kind of prefer shimmer over glitter. I definitely prefer shimmer over glitter actually. I just, yeah, it's just, it's just me. I don't wanna go for something super dark, but I do still want to have dimension. So I'm literally just going to, actually, you know what? I'm gonna start by putting some bronzer in my crease. This is like my little trick. I rarely use eyeshadow palettes as much as I love them. I only use them when I'm going like super glam. Nine times out of 10, if you see a brown shade in my crease, it's bronzer. So I'm just using the same bronzer by Galactic and kind of just gonna go ahead and swish that in my crease. What body moisturizers do you recommend? Okay, so like this is like way, something completely, completely different. But um, body moisture, I do have really extremely dry skin. So I really love to go for the lotions or body moisturizers, whatever you wanna call it that are like super packed with moisture just because that is what my skin needs, that is what my skin craves. So I will say number one on my list is the Lush Cosmetics Charity Pot. So good, so delicious. Some people say they only like to wear it at night because it is that like, it is super, super like creamy, little bit oily, but that's kind of what I like about it because my skin needs that. And if you love that like, nice little natural glow and like shine kind of on your legs, on, the, on your body, you'll absolutely love this. And another thing I love about it is that all the proceeds from that go to the different charities. So the charities are pictured on the actual bottle. I actually have a bottle right here, let me show you. So this is actually an empty bottle. I keep them because when you recycle and you return it in, ooh, I can actually go to Lush tomorrow. When you recycle them, like you can turn in, I think it's five of these to the store. They give you like a free face mask in return as a thank you for recycling. So I have like a mountain of these. But yeah, this is what I mean here on the top. It'll literally tell you exactly what charity you are supporting. So you can go through and pick, you know, there's some for animals, there's some for women, there's some for the earth. Like there's so many different kind of things. This one is the Clan Mothers Healing Village, supporting victims of systemic trauma, sexual violence, and sex trafficking. So I just love that it's not only like an amazing body lotion, best that I've ever used, but it's also charity based. It is a little bit on the pricier side, but I look at this as less of me buying something for myself and a little bit more of me saying, okay, this is my way of contributing back to society, if that makes sense. So yeah, definitely 10 out of 10 recommend. Two other options that I really absolutely love, the brand Necessaire has a really nice non-toxic lotion and they also have a body serum. So you use the serum and then the lotion on top. Mm. Moisture City, really, really good. And definitely nowhere near as like greasy as this, but definitely still very intensely moisturizing at the same time. So if you don't like the greasiness, then maybe definitely go for the necessaire. And then my third and final one that I would suggest is this black owned company that I just recently started using their stuff. They sent them to me actually, and I'm obsessed. The company is called LEL. I'll link all this below so you guys can check it out if you want. Um, but yeah, they have like handmade stuff and on the back of their products it says like, you know, it lists ingredients It literally says love and prayers first and then it lists like the actual scientific ingredients that were used to make the products But it is so great. It is handmade super natural non-toxic Absolutely love and I would say again not super greasy, but still very nice and intensely moisturizing also, a lot of her products have turmeric in there, so if you struggle with like spots on your skin, if your skin is just not as even as you want it to be on your body, the turmeric over time will really help to like even out your skin complexion. So yeah, I'm really big on lotions and moisturizers if you can't tell. So yeah, genuinely absolutely love all three of those companies. So again, it'll all be linked below if you guys wanna go ahead and check that out. So what shall we do next? You know what, I'm gonna smooth out this skin with my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Powder. 
This is another setting powder, but it's a pressed one. So I like to kind of like brush this over. Literally makes it look like you have a filter on your face. It's just so good. It makes everything look so seamless. Love this for me. All right, so the curly tech is asking, where do you get your hair cut? So I've gotten my hair cut at many different places. So right now that I'm in Atlanta, I have found one hair salon so far that is really, really good. It's called Curl Envy Salon. It is the bomb.com. I did a whole vlog on my first experience there. So if you guys haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. Any tips on where to begin with the curly hair journey? Oh, I love this question. Okay, I got all the tips. So personally, the first thing that I did, I had fully relaxed hair that I had been relaxing for years and years and years and years and years. And the first thing I did was stop putting heat in my hair. So I wore my relaxed hair, but I wore it like really wavy. I used to like do wash and goes, but I would scrunch it with a lot of custards. Um, I would do braid outs all the time so I could get that extra wavy kind of look and yeah so that is kind of where I would say you should start is trying to say goodbye to the heat from then so you can already get used to the curly look the curly vibe and get like an idea of like all that it's gonna entail um, I would then start to make your products a little bit more curly girl friendly so I would say kind of go for like the sulfate free paraben free silicone free stuff you don't have to be an absolute like sergeant with this stuff but definitely try and be a little bit more mindful of exactly what you're putting in your curls because that really will make all the difference and also number one tip do your weekly treatments if you can get yourself in that routine your curls are really gonna thank you for it. Um, okay, what do we got now? I think I'm gonna go ahead and put on a little bit of blush. I don't need my blush to look really crazy today, so I'm just going in with this blush by Mented. This is the shade Peach for the Stars, which is really, really cute. It's like a peachy, orangey shade, which I really love. Oh yes, yeah, see what I mean? Like, it's like there, but not there. And then just gonna add some highlights with my NARS Orgasm X palette. It's called, yeah, this is the Orgasm Highlighting blush powder but it definitely looks like a highlighter so yeah this is the one this is the one I love to use this on my cheeks for a nice little highlight oh. oh it just it never fails me never look at that mm -mm -mm. mm -mm -mm. all right so what do we got here does your dog shed a lot 100,000 50, 11, teen percent. Yes, she sheds a lot. I have to wash my bed sheets a lot. Um, but yeah, she sheds a lot. That's kind of something that comes along with being a dog owner, period. Unless you go for the more bougie kind of like hypoallergenic dogs. While we are on the topic of her, you guys should go ahead and follow her little Instagram page. She's at Life of Hirsch, okay? We're trying to grow her page a little bit. See if we can get her some doggy contracts, you know what I mean? She's gotta put in the work somehow. I mean, my girl doesn't even pay rent, so I'm trying to put her to work, all right? Are you married? No, but I hope I will be soon. Okay, Gym Socks 101 is asking, what are your all-time favorite gels? Whew, this is, who there's, okay. Let's do this, I gotta concentrate for this one. So, I love the Wee Dad Heat and Humidity Gel. The Camille Rose Curl Maker, but more as like a finisher gel, not really like an all over gel, if that makes sense. Um, I really love, what other gels do I love? Why am I like getting all flustered now? Ooh, I love the Curl Smith In Shower Style Fixer Gel, bomb.com. Also love their Hydro Style Flexi Jelly, bomb.com as well. Um, what other gels? What? Ooh, and you know what? The Tough Cookie Gel by TPH by Taraji. So good. I don't use it nearly enough, but it is literally that girl. I love it so, so much. And the Adjua Cream Gel, that thing is so, it's so unique. It just gives me a unique kind of finish, but I really, really love it. I think it's really, really nice. And so yeah, I guess I would call that an all-time favorite as well. What do you count as day one? The day of the wash or the first full day of being dry? So I actually got really tripped out the other day because I literally thought about this because I was like, what do other people call day one? Like I was like, is day one technically the day after wash day or is day one wash day? And honestly, how I've been saying it and how I will continue to probably say it because this is just basically what makes sense to me is day one is wash day. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see the lighting fluctuating right now? It's like so windy outside. The trees are doing this, blocking the sun. So I'm sorry if it looks really weird. 
nature is just doing something out there. But anyways, now you know, for me, when I say day one, I mean that's the day that I washed and styled my hair, whether or not it gets fully dry that day or not, that is gonna be like my day one for my wash and go. All right, let me take a quick break to just spray my face. All right, so instead of lashes, I'm gonna go in with my favorite mascara and I'm gonna do like coats on coats on coats of this thing. It's like literally the only mascara that is actually effective on my lashes. It's crazy, but no other mascara like curls my lashes the way that this one does. It's Bay, and I buy this by the boatload, all right? All right, let's get another question. Are you planning to color your hair again? This is also another conversation that I have with myself every single day because I want to do things to my hair. I want to color it. I also have my Pintura highlights, you know, they're kind of growing out now. So I'm like, do I got a color or do I like just touch on my Pintura highlights? Like, what do I do? Because I have been feeling a little bit bored with my curls lately. I just, I just, I'm at that stage where I kind of just want to play around with them. I want to have fun with them, do things, try things, you know? Um, but yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is start by probably touching up my Pintura highlights and then after that I will probably experiment with a little bit more color whenever I get a little bit more brave. <laughs> you know what? I'm kind of curious though, like what color would you guys like me to do? You guys have seen me do the temporary red, you've seen me do like the temporary like red with like more copper. So let me know, like, what would you guys want to see me do permanently to my hair? Would you want more highlights? Do you think I should do, like, red ombre? Like, whatever comes to mind, like, what do you think? Should I go back to, like, jet solid black? Because I was also considering that as well. But I'm curious to see what you guys think. So go ahead, comment below, and let me know, like, what what color would you want to see me do, like, permanently, though? Um... Has your BF considered moving to the States? Absolutely, 1000%. We, I already told him I'm not doing this long distance thing longer than a year and we're coming up at a year. So he does have his plan to try and come up here and yeah, so just stay tuned for that. I think once we eventually like move in together, I think that's when I will do like a whole formal introduction where you guys will like actually really get to meet him on camera you get to see him a lot more you guys can stay tuned for like a proper introduction at some point look at this red i hope that it's matte it looks very matte let me swatch it yep it's matte it's beautiful as well oh my gosh i'm very excited so this is what's really gonna take us to that like holiday-esque level this bright beautiful red absolutely love it before i put it on i'm gonna answer one more question <laughs> What made you decide to move to ATL? So, all of the northern parts of America were completely cut off because I cannot deal with the cold. So I kind of wanted somewhere where I would still experience seasons, so not necessarily Florida, because that's, I don't know, Florida's kind of meh. It's also the place where I've been. I'm just so accustomed to it. I'm just so used to it. I just wanted something different. So. Um, I started looking at states where it was kind of like, okay, where is not too cold, but still a vibe, like where are things happening? So of course it was kind of like New York and Atlanta, like things are popping off here. But of course I had to write New York off the list because it's so, so cold. So basically it just came down to that. And not only that, I just feel like it's diverse in general. So I really, really love to see that. I feel like I fit in a little bit here and it's popping. There's so many nice little pockets within the city where you can check out and just do really cool things. I feel like there's a scene for me to meet people, other bloggers, be out here for events. Like I just think Atlanta's literally the best of everything that I ever wanted. So I'm really happy to be here. And despite everything, I absolutely genuinely love it here so much. And I cannot wait to explore a little bit more in 2021. All right, I also cannot wait to put this lipstick on. So let me go ahead and do that. Are y'all seeing what I'm seeing? This is, oh, this is beautiful. Um, this is insanely beautiful. Like what? Like boom, we just went from like basic regular list to Christmas list, like right in like two seconds. And I just, I just, I love this. Oh my goodness. Oh, you know what? I actually gotta show you guys the packaging. Did I even mention 
what lipstick this is. Oh my gosh, I got so excited. I was sidetracked. So this is the Pure Cosmetics Barbie collection. They did a whole Barbie collection and they had like insane, beautiful, glittery, pink packaging and everything. Now, this lipstick, it like opens in the weirdest way. So you gotta like push the top and then pull it out. It's like, it's so different and so cute. And then boom. This is it, it's beautiful. So this is in the shade CEO. It was meant for me, honey. I love this. All right, what else do we got here? Let's do some quick questions. Was Hershey a rescue pup? Yes, she was. She showed up at my parents' house in the Cayman Islands, like out of nowhere, literally poor thing. She was like starving, she was so hungry. She had like a rash all around her eyes and on her nose, she was just a little teeny puppy. And I was just like, I'm going to take you to the vet. And so I took her, souped her up as soon as I saw her. And yeah, she got the all clear from the vet. I decided to name her Hershey right then and there. And then ever since then, she has been my boss. <laughs> Honestly, I like to call her my boss. She gets whatever she wants. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's my baby, that's my daughter, and yeah, again, she has her own Instagram page, so you guys can keep up with her and everything that she's up to on there. Does it make sense to transition or just do the big chop? I say, honestly, it's really up to you and who you are as a person and what you feel comfortable with. I told myself I was never gonna big chop ever, and then I couldn't handle the transitioning, so by that time, I was just like, nah, it's not it for me, and I just ended up saying it would be better for me personally to big chop rather than to struggle through the transition that was just making me, I didn't feel pretty, I felt frustrated, and I honestly felt like what could, like it literally couldn't go any more wrong, you know what I mean? So I was like, might as well just chop it off, you know? Um, and I had so much fun along that journey, like so, so much, honestly, but really looking back, I was never the type of person to ever even have short hair. I never did anything crazy with my hair, so to think that I actually did that is a little bit crazy, but when you feel it in your heart and you feel it is right for you, then absolutely do it. But I do think both, both options are perfectly fine. They make perfect sense, just depending on you as a person. I am feeling real holiday-esque right now. We got soft, big, like, fluffy kind of curls. We got a red lip, we got nice little soft, sweatshirt on and I am ready to sit by the fireplace with some eggnog like I love this look this is so cute oh you know what you guys also submitted some assumptions so let me address a couple of these okay so somebody said no negative assumptions you seem very friendly that's very nice I am friendly unless you rub me the wrong way, then I can become very unfriendly. But for the most part, I am very, very friendly, sometimes too friendly, like friendly to a fault. Um, so yeah, I would say pretty accurate. Yeah, somebody else said, I think you have that personality of telling it to people straight in their face and not holding back. I would say yes, but you have to push me to that point because Again, I'm just a very nice, like bubbly kind of person. I just love good vibes, good energy. So if somebody comes up to me and is like trying to kill my vibe, then of course I'm gonna let them know. I'm gonna be like, I don't have time for that. I will, I will let them know. I am a very straight up person. I, yeah, I kind of tell it like how it is when I need to. <laughs> somebody said a little bit of an airhead, but I love you. Hell no, your girl is educated, okay? I like to have fun. I like to talk my shit, but I'm not an airhead. I'm educated, I'm smart. I graduated from Stetson University, magna cum laude, with a bachelor's degree in business admin and a minor in marketing. So, your girl's educated, I'm not an airhead. And somebody said you're not really Caribbean, just your family. No, I am actually a thousand percent Caribbean. I'm literally as Caribbean as it gets. I was born and raised in the Cayman Islands. Caribbean life is all that I know. I know sometimes you guys don't really hear my accent as much, but I have an accent. It just kind of depends on like who I'm talking to or if I'm excited or sometimes even if I'm mad about something, like I really get into it. Um, but yeah, I'm 100% a Caribbean girl and I'm trying to figure out this whole like American life that I've kind of just like, just moved into at the beginning of this year. So yeah guys, this was fun. I really enjoyed this whole get ready with me Q and A assumptions kind of video. This was really fun. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing something a little bit more along the lines of this, getting to know me a little bit more. I will definitely be coming through with more vlogs and everything. I hope you guys will look forward to seeing more of those kind of videos. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.